Did you know that the term Sangiovese is derived from the Latin phrase sanguis jovis, or the blood of Jupiter? Now, it's quite a compliment for any grape to have its juice named after the blood of a god, especially the king of all Roman gods, Jupiter. But then we learn that Jupiter married his sister and then cheated on her multiple times and generally had worse impulse control than a beagle on meth. So really, the question we end up asking ourselves is, are we really able to publicly endorse Sangiovese without getting cancelled on Twitter? And the relevance of all these musings is that today's Hand Drink Solo Wine Info video is about exactly such a bottle of Sanguis Jovis, the Raka Sangiovese 2019 made by winemaker Joseph Dreyer. Now, Raka Estate is owned by Joseph's family, the Drea family, and it's located within the Clane River Wine Ward, which actually wouldn't even exist were it not for the Drea family. The Clane River Wine Ward is kind of directly east of Cape Point, and it's a scotch north of the Agullis Wine Triangle, which is the southernmost point on the African continent. Interestingly, the Clane River Valley was originally rejected from being part of the Walker Bay Wine District. And I guess rightly so, because it is almost 20 kilometers inland from the town of Stamford, which is at the heart of the Walker Bay District. But despite not being part of Walker Bay, it does possess some really epic winemaking conditions. And so it was that Pete and Elna Drea, the patriarch and matriarch, of the Drea family had to fight really hard in order to get this special little unique plot of land recognized as its own winemaking appellation. And so it was that the Clane River Ward came to be. The Clane River Ward is located within the larger Overberg district, but if we zoom in, we'll see how Rock Estate is actually laid out over the shoulders of the Clane River Valley. This not only gives Rock Estate a large range of aspects to work with, but it also positions them right in the Clane River Valley wind funnel in order to bring winds through there to cool off some of the warmer north-facing sites. And incidentally, those shoulders that I just mentioned are part of the Clane River Mountains, which are the southernmost mountain range on the entire African continent. So as far as the Clane River Ward goes, it's a combination of southerly latitude, a touch of altitude, as I said, around 100 meters above sea level, and also some fairly long mountain shadows that make for some rather interesting winemaking terroir. But their terroir is not even the most fascinating thing about Raqqa or the Drea family. What makes these guys so fascinating is their seemingly indomitable winemaking curiosity. Because while it's true to say that most of their wines come from Shiraz or the Bordeaux cultivars, they do make a point of always keeping separate a wide range of less common single cultivar wines, which are a lot of fun to drink side by side. So this range includes some lovely examples of Molbeck, Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc, and of course, today's Sangiovese. Incidentally, Petit Verdot and Molbeck are two single cultivars that really seem to be exciting viticulturists and winemakers around South Africa. And so those are two cultivars that are worth watching for wine collectors looking to buy for the future. And when we finally get into the glass and give this guy a sniff, we get a rather rich, regal, quite classic nose. And I guess when I say classic, what I mean in the context of big South African reds is that there is a combination of lovely, rich, ripe fruit set alongside sweeter oak spice with rather brooding, savory complications. I guess what I'm saying in another sense is that it smells expensive. Now, if we're to tease apart the actual elements that we smell, well, you have lovely black currant elements and black cherry. Then from the oak, you've got a little bit of cedarwood, almost like your Nana's antique cabinet, and alongside notes of cassia bark, which I guess is a little like cinnamon, but not quite as sweet. And then finally, you do have, as I promised, the more brooding, almost dried tobacco leaf elements, which really are quite engaging. And when we take a sip, you get all of the concentrated dark fruit that the nose promised, but you also get texture. So up front, you have those black currant slash cassis notes. You also have some delightfully juicy black cherry acidity. But then the mouthfeel delivers a combination of fairly firm tannins, but also with a fruit component that has this beautifully velvety nature to it. It's almost like that malolactic conversion has taken some brighter fruit and turned it almost into a hot chocolatey mouthfeel on the palate. It's really quite interesting. And perhaps the best part about the wine for me is that it finishes savory. So you have that black currant up front and then moving into the juicy black cherry. But then as that black cherry begins to fade, you have the emergence of that 
tobacco note, and that kind of keeps the fruit company as the whole wine comes to a close. When it comes to discussing how the wine was made, winemaker Joseph Dreyer doesn't let things get too complicated. The farm has two blocks of Sangiovese, both of which face north and sit between 75 meters to 95 meters above sea level. He takes these blocks, harvests them, and then ferments them in stainless steel tanks. And that fermentation takes about five days or so. And when that's all done, it is then moved into another tank where malolactic conversion can take place. And finally, when that process is over, the wine goes into a mix of Hungarian oak and French oak. They are 225 liter barrels. And that's where you get those elements of cedar wood and perhaps the cassia bark. And for those of you who like to geek out on yeast, Joseph uses two different yeasts when fermenting this Sangiovese. The first one is a Zymaflor F83 made by Lefort. Now the rad thing about F83 is that it is actually made from wild yeast that were isolated in Tuscany in Italy, which is of course the spiritual home of Sangiovese, whatever that means. This F83 is also known to boost those red fruit elements and floral elements, like so you've got your strawberry and your cherry notes, and then also those floral or violet or rose notes, which Sangiovese can have loads of. The other thing that F83 does, which is very similar to Renaissance's Bravo yeast, is that it boosts glycerol production. And glycerol can be useful because it indirectly affects how humans perceive tannins, and so it can give the perception of a much richer, rounded wine when fermenting high tannin grapes of which Sangiovese is one. The second yeast that Joseph uses is called Andante, made by Renaissance, which we just mentioned. And according to Joseph, this yeast really seems to boost elements of black fruit, but as well as that spice note, again, which is very prevalent on the wine. Okay, so that's all we have time for today. But if you have any questions about the difference between French or Hungarian oak, or perhaps about Zymaflor F83, then drop a comment on the site and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. And then if you enjoyed today's video, then support us on Patreon and also subscribe to the Handring Solo YouTube channel where we publish at least six videos each month talking about wine history, wine science, unusual cultivars, and some of the rising winemaking stars that are coming out of the dynamic South African wine movement.